This video is presented to you by Physics for Students. To know more, please visit us at physicsforstudents.com. Hello and welcome to my channel Physics for Students. My name is Shaunak and welcome to this sixth episode of Maxwell's Equations in which we are going to deal with the differential form of Gauss's law. Before we go ahead and understand the different components and further details, here I would like to give you a quick recap on what we have learned in the earlier video so that it won't be difficult for those who have not observed this video, it becomes easy for you. So what we have learned in the earlier video is the integral form of the Gauss's law. We have seen that this integral sign is the sum up of the portions of a closed surface. The E is electric field and the arrow denotes it is a vector. The S is the surface integral, not a volume or a nylon integral. The arrow denotes the integral over a closed surface. The dot product, this is, we have seen quite that why there is a dot product and what happens, the implications in the earlier video. N, which is a unit normal vector, not very common to certain texts, however, if it comes, so I just given it, it becomes useful. This is the area uh, increment uh, uh, in the surface area. Permittivity of free space, we have already noticed. E and C is only the enclosed charge and Q denotes the charge in coulombs. So these are the different components of integral form of Gauss's law and we have seen this in the earlier video. However, it is quite a note, uh, it is worthy to take a note on that. So what we have seen, this entire left portion which is marked in blue denotes the electric flux and this portion denotes the total amount of charge divided by the permittivity of free space. So this is all in all the Gauss's law what it speaks. So if we go further, what we see is that the differential form. Now when we talk of the differential form, just let us understand that, el that uh, the, the el uh, what it says that the electric uh, charge produces an electric field and the flux that field passing through any closed surface is proportional to the total charge, which is the Gauss's integral form we have seen. Now this is what is the differential form. Now, what we do is that, let us first understand what it speaks, the left and the right hand side. The left hand side says the divergence of the electric field. Uh, this is a new concept which we are going to take it over further. And this right hand side denotes the electric charge density divided by the permittivity of free space. More or less these terms I think you already know if you have seen my earlier video but the divergence of the electric field is something that we are going to look forward, right? Now, uh, we step forward and look into the differential form. So, the integral form is for electric fields linked to the electric flux. But just like any other Maxwell's equation, Gauss's law also has this one, which is the differential form. Now, what it says, the differential form, it says that the electric field, which is produced by electric charge, diverges from the positive charge, which is important, I have written in red, and converges upon the negative charge, right? So this is an important part. It diverges from the positive charge and converges upon the negative charge. Now, before going ahead and explaining the different components and other areas of, different, of this differential form, what we need to understand is what is a charge density and why do we need this charge density, right? So uh, now, what is important is that, that because it is divergence, it is and this is this charge density. Let us look, go ahead and look forward. First of all, we need to understand that uh, why we need the charge density. Why? Because we cannot count individual charges. It is not possible. What do I mean by that? Let me show you a figure. For example, this cube, which is red, uh, got certain points, which are the multiple charges, right? Now, you see, while taking into account, if we take the discrete charges, that means we can count one, two, three, four, and so on. So we can use this formula to calculate it up, right? So this is counting and adding up the individual or discrete charges. But however, in the real world, we come across millions and billions of charges across a wire or a surface or anything. So it is not possible. So I have written beside this why is that counting individual charges are not possible. So what we do is that we can't calculate the charge density. So before calculating the charge density, here is what is classically called density. It is mass by volume and charge density overall, we can say that it is charge by volume, 
right so the definition is in electromagnetism charge density is the measure of electric charge per unit volume of space in two three or one two or three dimensions right so now you understand that because we are unable to calculate charge one by one and use this formula which is behind this red cube what we need to find is that the charge density which one is denser and which one is less denser so number charges uh, per unit volume is defined as charge density so here is an example if there are 10 power of 15 electrons in one meter cube then the charge density is 10 power 15 charges per meter cube so now you understand that before going into differential form first concept is charge density now so in all what we can say charge density represents how crowded or how dense the charges at a specific point because we cannot calculate individually we are just finding the uh, density at a specific point now this lambda is basically what is called the linear charge density the sigma denotes the area charge and the rho denotes the volume charge density right so if it is enclosed length that is capital L we just multiply that if it is enclosed area A we multiply this with uh, uh, with uh, sigma and if it is enclosed volume V we can multiply it by V so now the question is that uh, for curved surfaces this doesn't happen okay so we do take integrals which I have not shown here if you refer to my previous video you will find that how when it is changed to curved surfaces how the integration is being done however this is just a visual representation that we have got a box and you know there are plus charges and we take the infinite simon small charge and we calculate the linear charge density however this is not important just to give you an idea so this is what is called charge density and these are the different linear area and volume density and uh, further on okay so good to go now we do what is that we calculate the different components of this differential form this is the vector operator we will cover this is the differential operator which is called the Greek letter nabla here we also find the dot product electric field is quite common which is followed by a arrow which means the vector this is charge density in coulombs per cubic meter and this is the electric permittiv permittivity in free space so overall these are the different components uh, which deals with the differential form of Gauss's law so what it says in layman's term if positive charge is present the divergence is positive if negative charge is present then divergence is negative okay now it, this is something very important that there is a fundamental difference between the differential and integral form of Gauss's law okay now if we talk of the integral form it entails the uh, integral of the normal component of the electric field over a surface I repeat it entails the integral of the normal component over the field of a surface however the differential form deals with the divergence of the electric field and the charge density at individual points in space now you see whatever we are taking of charge density and individual points then only the concept of divergence emerges right so if you have seen my earlier video in the series I have mentioned that differential form and is more of a local approach although it it makes the same thing but it's a local approach so divergence arises from the point concept and hence we will explore more about divergence which is very fundamental in Maxwell's equations in differential form okay so what we do is that we come across what is called the del operator right so the del or nabla is an operator used in mathematics as a vector differential operator usually represented by this nabla sign now what is important here is that when it is applied to a function defined in one dimensional domain it denotes the standard derivative or uh, as we know in the calculus right but this is present in all differential forms of Maxwell's equation let us see one by one so this is differential form of Gauss's law the del operator differential form of Gauss's magnetic law which we have not covered differential form of Faraday's law and differential form of Maxwell's law all of them you see this is the del operator this one this one and this one all of them are present in Maxwell's four equations now can you see one thing very striking that these are all differential forms not integral forms so that means the del operator particularly to Maxwell's equation this is found in the differential form of Gauss's magnetic 
Faraday's law and Ampere Maxwell's law. So here that is why I have given it in bold the divergence of electric field and charge density at individual points. This is something which contributes to the divergence. So what I have been telling is that the differential forms deal with the divergence of the electric field and the charge density at individual points because we cannot calculate uh, individuals we are calculating charge density and hence the del operator is used in all these four equations for differential equations of Maxwell's equations okay so far so good let us go ahead the del operator so first of all we take the derivatives of the quantity so de del operator is a way to find the derivative just in the way in calculus we find derivative here we are finding the derivative of a vector so here are some examples so we find what is called a curl of a vector right so if you are aware about this term curl the curl of a vector provides uh, you can say um, amount of rotation of the vector and on a field at a point this 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 one uh, shows the rotation so in general the curl of any vector function actually gives the measure of the angular velocity at any point of the field divergence we will come across so that is this is how uh, it radially points out through the box then we have got the gradient which is called you can locally call it as a local steepest slope i mean to say generally you can call it local steepest slope here is the diagram and it also calculates the laplacian so these are the usage of del operators although there is a combination you see of a dot product and a cross product but here is somehow these four are the important usages. Now the question is that how do we use the del operator so the del, del operator is a way of finding the vector you may be fine familiar in finding the derivatives right so what we do is that we to find the derivative of a vector. Now here d by fx of f prime x this is the term that tells us to take the derivative in the first place so you can think of d by dx as the derivative operator because it tells you to take the derivative of the thing that is next to. So what we see that uh, we consider f of x as a function f prime x is the derivative and d by x dx is the term of the derivative right which your derivative operator. So we want to so in this way we also want to calculate the derivatives of vectors so we do with the Cartesian coordinates x y and z and why do we do this because many physical phenomena such as electric gravitational and further are described as vectors and these changes and these changes in multiple directions and that is why we take the derivatives so how do we take the derivative we use the del operator and we use this as you can see that we want to use the vector it will be uh, so we take all three cartesian coordinates not just x it will have more letters x y and z and these are unit vectors in the direction of cartesian coordinates so what we are doing is that we are just doing the partial derivative right of the unit vector x hat y hat and these are unique vectors so i put a hat around it so this is how the same uh, calculation of finding a del operator uh, sorry finding the derivative in here we are trying to find the derivative of a vector now since there are two ways to multiply vectors right in general so what are the two ways so uh, uh, there are two ways of multiplying vectors we naturally get two ways of finding the vector derivative also right what are the two ways you by that time you know that is one is the dot product which is this and one is the cross product which is this right so there are two ways to multiply vectors the dot and the cross and each multiplication is scalar value now and uh, for example using the dot products is calculated calculating the divergence of the electric field and this one uh, the cross product is used for calculating the curl which i have just shown you earlier so here we take a derivative using the cross product and we are left with the vector value b which is its time derivative now for example this one this is the del operator it is useful outside vectors also if we treat the del operator just as a sum of different things we can multiply it by some scalar uh, function and that function gets distributed into this whole however there is an important point here you will see that we have turned a scalar into a vector right this is known as the gradient of the scalar function so hope it is clear so what it does is that it tells you the direction of the function is changing most rapidly and this is used in the potential this one and this is basically the potential energy and this one is the force so this is just to let you understand that how we can use the del operator and because there are 
two ways I have shown one with the dot and the cross product but this one the uh, equation right at the bottom is just we are taking the uh, del operator outside vectors and we treat the del operator just as plus 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 x plus y plus z as sum of different things and we can multiply it by some scalar function so and it gives a kind of a potential so what we have learned in this particular video let us summarize we have learned differential form of Gauss's law we have learned what is a charge density what are the components of the differential form and what is the del operator also there's a mistake it should be r somehow i missed it so i would take a pause in here because in the next video what i'm going to teach you or we what we are together going to learn is something which is called the divergence and because it is a very important and a concept which takes a little bit of time i don't want to extend this video further in making you understand the divergence do let me know how this series is going on uh, please do like subscribe and let me know the comments where you have been able to understand what part you have really liked and what part you have not so that i can improve on my next videos so bye take care and do stay safe and uh, safe and happy and we will be exploring divergence in the next video thank you very much and goodbye